Okay, now we're getting into summation identities and how to use these to find sines, cosines, and tangents of angles that are not pretty angles on the unit circle. They're not special things like 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and so on. And how that works, we'll get into in a moment, but I do really want to focus on these equations right here. We have to memorize these. This one in particular, the summation identity, is so important. It comes up quite a lot in this class in trigonometry, and you'll see it again in calculus, college-level algebra. It's all over the place. So you just got to memorize this one. And I think the easiest way, at least what I've used in the past, is a little rhyme. Signs can't change signs. Okay, and if you think about what's happening in the equation, see I've got an S right here, signs. C stands for can't. C stands for change. And S stands for signs. So that's what that reminds me of when I think signs can't change signs. And if you look at the plus sign in the parentheses, that hasn't changed, right? Because signs can't change signs. It's not going to change the plus sign. And likewise, below it, you see a minus b okay, right here, and that, that sign has not changed either. It's still a minus sign right there. So whether it's plus b or minus b, uh, you can use this equation right here. One of these two, anyway. Now with cosine, it's slightly different. The way to remember that one is cosine changes the silly sign. And if you look in the parentheses, what started out as a plus is now a minus, or if it was a minus, it is now a plus. Okay, so keep that, keep these two rhymes in mind. Cosine changes the silly sign, and signs can't change signs. That's how you remember these two identities. Tangent's a little harder, and I've tried a bunch of ways in the past. Um, last year's class came up with some ridiculous story about Tom going to a bakery and buying one, you know, it just went on and on and on. No one remembered it. It was amusing. Um, I just try to say tan tan one tan tan. And I just remember that phrase, tan tan one tan tan. It's a palindrome. Because I think palindromes are fun, right? If you say tan tan one tan tan, see? Same forwards and backwards. Now, these tans are multiplied, tangent times tangent. These tangents are added together, but you know, it, it's the best I've been able to come up with. So if you like palindromes, maybe tan tan one tan tan is going to help you out. The opposite angle addition uh, difference, if you have tan of A minus B, that's going to change the signs. You're going to have tangent of A minus tangent of B over 1 plus tangent of A times tangent of B. And sometimes people ask how you can remember that the plus goes on top and the minus goes on bottom in this case, uh, and vice versa. Well, think about it this way. The top of a tangent function equals sine over cos, or the tangent equals sine over cosine. That's the quotient's identity. Now, sine can't change signs. So what started as a plus stays as a plus over here because signs can't change signs. But cosine, which is on the bottom, cosine changes the silly sign. So what started as a plus now turns into a minus on the bottom. And that argument is reversed if you have tangent of A minus B. Okay. Um, most important thing, though, I think, is maybe remember the quotient identity, which you really should. And remember that tan, tan, one, tan, tan, that is a palindrome. I was looking at palindromes on the web to try and figure out how to drive this message home. Look what I found. This, this is a palindrome, apparently, according to the internet. Uh, it's called a taco cat. Have you heard about this before? It's new to me. Taco cat, same forwards as backwards. So if this disturbing space monster here helps you remember tan tan one tan tan, great. That means a cat has, for the first time in history, come in useful. And that is enough to satisfy me. So moving on, let's put these equations to work. I'm going to ask you for sine of 285 degrees. Now, when I think of 285 degrees, First thing I think is, oh gosh, that's not on the unit circle. Here's my unit circle. See right down here? It's not on there. Um, I've got 270. I've got 300, but I don't have the one in between. I don't have 285. But I can say that 285 equals 45 degrees plus what? Well, 240. 45 degrees. I really love 45 degrees because when you're trying to break angles down, 45 degrees is always a good one. It's always 45 degrees this. Uh, 45 degrees plus that. 
So as I look at my unit circle, I see 45 degrees right there and 240 degrees right here. So I can tell that this is going to be a useful way to talk about this angle. So let's go ahead and break that down. Sine of 45 times cosine of 240. And sines can't change sines, so that's going to have to be a plus between them. Uh, then it's going to be can't change sine, so that's cosine of 45 and sine of 240. Okay, so that's how I would break this apart and make it a little easier to tackle. Now, in terms of what that actually turns out to be, well, you use your unit circle. So sine of 45 is radical 2 over 2. Cosine of 240, do you remember this one? Try to think about it before I scroll down. It's going to be the x direction, and 240 is almost 270, so it's an arrow that's pointing mostly down but a little bit to the left. That's going to be negative 1 half. And you see, see what I'm talking about? It's going a little to the left, so that's not very far in the x direction to the left. So that is negative 1 half. So we would say, get that cat off of here. It's going to be radical 2 over 2 times negative 1 half plus cosine of 45. Again, that's radical 2 over 2. And sine of 240 is negative radical 3 over 2. Okay, that was an arrow pointing mostly down to the left. So mostly down means radical 3. And when I multiply those together, what do I get? Um, looks like negative radical 2 plus, I know it's hard to see with all the scribbles here, but it would be negative radical 6 all over 4. That would be my answer for this one. So you see I broke it into two angles and then split those according to signs, can't change signs. If this were cosine, you would have just said cos 45, cos 240, minus, cos, minus sine 45, sine 240. Now with tangent, same idea. I want to use 45 degrees somehow. So I'm going to say 15 degrees. Well, that's just 45 degrees minus 30 degrees. So my formula has to be C. Uh, oh boy, this, this one's going to be longer. It's the tan tan one tan tan thing. So that's going to be tangent of 45 degrees plus... Oh, no, it's minus, because on the top, tangent does not change signs. Tangent 45 minus tangent 30 degrees over, uh, let's see, tan tan 1 tan tan. So that's going to be 1 plus tangent 45 degrees and tangent of 30 degrees. Okay, that's how you would break this apart into pieces. And then as you evaluate that, part of this turns out really nice, because tangent of 45 degrees, this is another reason why 45 degrees is so great, Tangent of 45 degrees is just equal to 1. So this simplifies real fast. We get 1 minus tangent of 30 degrees. Well, what's tangent of 30 degrees? That's going to be, um, I think, 1 over radical 3. 1 minus 1 over radical 3 over 1 plus 1 over radical 3. And if you want, you can put that in as your answer, right? It's, I mean, it's technically correct. I would prefer to rationalize this so I don't have radicals making a compound fraction, it's kind of ugly. I might write this as, um, you know, radical 3 minus 1 over uh, radical 3 plus 1. And some people are going to point out, well, that's not rationalized either because you have radicals on the bottom. Okay, fine. But it looks better. So point is, it'll accept either of these things because the computer says, oh, you understand what the tangent summation identity is, so good enough.